Welcome back. Welcome back to sunny Southern California here. And Merry Christmas to everybody from the Start of Biz radio show. My wonderful dear friend and partner, Aaron Scott Young, is back. Uh, he had lunch with his gorgeous wife, Michelle. What would you guys have for lunch? Well, we didn't. We had a quick drive back because of my uh, – we had problems. That can, you can hear me okay, right, Coach? Yeah, I can hear you great. Okay, good. I want to make sure because uh, we dialed in. We had a tornado here this morning. Uh, there's all kinds How can of you have problems. a tornado in Washington? Uh, that's what that's what uh, we're saying. But no, there uh, took roofs off buildings. It uh, blocked roads, trees down, crazy stuff. And so uh, I apologize for being out and about and not here when I was. No, uh, pr- no sorry. problem. I, you know what? Not today. But I want to start crazy, like uh, you're a goat. You raise goats. I, I'd like to buy a goat. So would Justin. Let's start not today, but you know, have you named all your goats yet? Because I would like to have an opportunity to maybe name a goat after the coach. We uh, we keep a full dossier on every goat. We uh, we know exactly, you know, everything about them, what their hobbies are, who they like to hang around. What with. about? Can you name one of the uh, little right. goats after me, like the little coach? We'll have a little, a little, little coach, little Ronnie. Little yeah, Ronnie. little Ronnie, little Ronnie. I'm your, you uh, yeah, little Ronnie. I'm your host, Coach Ron Tunick, and my wonderful partner, Aaron Scott Young. You can tell uh, he's uh, just outside of the tour. Is it still blowing up there? Uh, it's. It, thanks for asking. It's calmed down now, but it, it was quite interesting because you know we don't live in Tornado Alley. This is no. Kansas or Oklahoma. Yeah. This is Southwest Washington. For a tornado to come through here and take out buildings and trees and well, it's unbelievable. Uh, close businesses, really uh, uh, unexpected. And uh, uh, anyway, but we're this all is all part of the El Nino. You know that I was watching. I'm a kind of a weather guy, and I was watching the weather guy last night. This is all, you know, when the uh, when the weather pattern changes, uh, we're we're going to get it probably starting around January 15th. So you're you're getting part of this El Nino. So you missed the first segment. Uh, the author was, uh, he's a, he was a senior partner um, at um, Ogilvy and Mather. Oh, yeah. Great yeah, I mean, that's, term, I mean, that's not chopped liver, baby. That's, no, no. Uh, that's not chopped liver. His name was Jeffrey Bowman. So we, he wrote this book called Reframe the Marketplace, just to, just to summarize it real quick. And because you're a marketing genius, I'm not, you are. Uh, the, uh, the book's about the changing cultures, is that if you don't talk to uh, the various cultures in their language, uh, uh, if, if you don't hit them emotionally where they understand, you're not going to sell them anything. So anyway, that's you a... Know, my, you know. Well, you know, Coach, the problem is that a lot of us just like to do things old school. Exactly. The way we've always done it. Right. And what we have to learn to do is uh, to meet people where they are. And and the idea of a, of, of a, a Caucasian or a, a Christian... Um, uh, majority in the United States isn't really tr- no. the reality. No. And if you think about it, you know, let's just real quick, the 13 colonies, go back to 1776, the reason that they wanted separation of church and state had nothing to do with the way it's been perverted in, in the uh, government now. It was because every one of those colonies were a different religious group. That's right. And, they, and the, the Shakers didn't want to work with the Presbyterians who didn't want to work with the Methodists or the Catholics. And and so they said, let's form this government, and we, we're not going to have a state government. Everybody can do their own thing. And um, they understood 200 plus years ago, you have to, if you're going to have success and prosperity, you've got to meet people where they are and not be the morality police. Amen, partner. And you know, and I, I, I was a teacher uh, at a college in high school, and, you know, I taught history, and I've studied uh, uh, all areas of history, and you're right on. And, and I'd love to, uh, as, the, as the weeks and months go along, incorporate some of this, because I think you, you said something. that if, if We've done things the same way for too long, and uh, for those of us that are a little bit older, if we don't adapt, if we don't make changes, if we don't understand the changing marketplace, uh, if we don't talk to people in in their own language, uh, if we don't understand that there's change, you're gonna you're gonna struggle. You're you're really gonna struggle. Well, well you know, a lot of us do, especially you know, I'm uh, you and I are different age. I'm 51. Um, I grew up in Southern California, and I was a little kid in the 60s and the early 70s before we moved up here to the Northwest. Very different. Um, cultural climate between Los Angeles County and uh, Multnomah County in Portland, Oregon. And I remember growing up with hearing a lot of um, very racially negative things, mostly about Hispanics. And then I got up here and 
you know, there's a, there's um, a different, I don't know, Portland especially is a very, very liberal area. There's, it's a lot more relaxed about people. But I, I was indoctrinated as a little child that there was this separation between us and them. Then I get up here, and as I've been an adult, I've met all these great people that are uh, Hispanic from, you know, they could be Mexicans or they could be from Central or South America, but they're, they're Latino people. And I've learned so many great things about family, about community, about helping each other that um, is, is greatly, um, has greatly disappeared in a lot of uh, Caucasian families. Everybody's kind of an island where this group of people was, but all I knew was the racial prejudice that I heard from my, my uh, grandparents. No, uh, and, you know, you, you are, you are spot on. You're listening to Aaron Scott Young and the coach, Coach Ron Tunick, on a show called Start a Biz, and you can listen to us every week on Hometown Station. We're also on the weekends, hometownstation.com. And I'm telling you, you download the app. It's the best radio app in the country. Go to the App Store, and you can carry us around. It's KHTS 1220 AM is the app. And and uh, you can go to uh, the Hometown Station and listen to our podcast. So if you want to binge and learn about business and, and listen to Aaron Scott Young. Look, ladies and gentlemen, he's one of the best motivational and intelligent speakers in the country. He really is. He gets paid a lot of money, travels all over the country trying to help businesses grow and make life better for them. And, and he's he's a warm-hearted person. He's somebody that actually cares about people. And uh, I, I'm his partner. I'm a little bit more uh, hardened in many ways. I'm a little bit more conservative in many ways. And a little uh, bit more... Big softy. Oh, big marshmallow. Big marshmallow. Hello. I'm a little bit more conservative than you, and we're going to get into a subject here in a minute that uh, if you're driving, you may want to pull over because uh, it may upset you uh, what we're going to talk about. But let me finish off on what you said, because when I, I've been going to Washington and Oregon uh, probably before you were born, uh, at least uh, 35 years. When I first went to Oregon, you, you would not see uh, any Hispanics out and, and about. Uh, Hispanics were there, but they were hiding because you know they were they were on the apple orchard farms. They were still yeah, that's true. they were hiding. Uh, agriculture is a big part of Oregon and Washington, and they lived in their own communities. Uh, everything you said is so accurate. They lived in their own communities, and what made that culture so strong is that their family unit had to stay together to support. Right? Oh, no question about it. But they also are. There, the, the, and I, I didn't mean to make this about Hispanics per se, but the thing that I've learned from my friends and by being in their homes and going to their birthday parties and having dinner with them and, uh, is that they, they are much more of a multi-generational um, community. In other words, having grandparents, parents, and children, it's not just because of you know, lack of funds, although it might be, but it's also because it's just part of the community. They don't put their old people away in some home no, or some shelter no, somewhere. No, we have a. You know, they, you're right. You're so right. We have so much to learn from so many other cultures, and I'm hoping as the weeks and months go along that we say things that matter. Uh, sometimes it's a word or phrase or just an idea on a show we call Start a Biz. I'm hoping we're doing this show to inspire you to do better in your life. It's not about money. Uh, it's about winning in life. Uh, winning in life is not about having all the money. It's, uh, it's about uh, doing the right things and, and building relationships. And when you do the right things and you can create trust, as you well know, Aaron Scott Young, that's how you build a business. You build a business through relationships. So That's right. That's all right. So right. let's get into something that's been bugging me for a week because we got into it on Facebook. Look, uh, Aaron and I have been accused of sometimes agreeing too much on stuff, but not today. We're not going to agree a lot on the next subject. Also, coming up in the next four or five weeks, we have some of the best guests in America. Literally, next week we got uh, uh, your Langmeyer. Yeah, Laura you know, Langmeyer coming on. Uh, we've got the guy that wrote the E Myth. You know who that is? Gerber. Yeah, uh, Michael Gerber. Michael Gerber is a good guy. good friend of the coaches. He'll be on uh, maybe also next week or the week after. We've got Tom Hopkins coming on. Literally, he taught America in the 80s and 90s how to sell. He, he, he has yeah. the best-selling books of all time. 
uh, on selling. Tom Hopkins will be on with us in January, yeah. January so 10th. Ken Courtright coming Ken up. Ken Courtright. You talk about a genius uh, uh, on the internet, and, and he's going to talk about the internet and, and all the big, huge businesses that he's represented and coached. So our show, if you listen to it every week and tell your friends, it's like going to a master's college class. Except I'm hoping we're going to be more fun than the boring professors. We are a master's class in business. And whether it's a new business, old business, well-established business, we're going to try so hard to bring these people. We're heard all over the country. You can listen to us online at hometownstation.com. Okay, so I said something the other day on Facebook that I got a lot of uh, feedback, a lot of pushback. Some people agreed. Some people didn't agree. Some people called me names. Here's what I said. I said, if you own your own business, you have a right to deny service to anybody. That's what I said. I believe that if you own your own business, and you do, uh, Aaron and I do, and of course our show is brought to you by Laughlin USA. Don't forget, 44 years in business, over 100,000 clients. If you need documents, if you're going to start a corporation, LLC, corporation, partnership, you don't have to go spend three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 with an attorney. Go to Laughlin usa.com look at their look at the the kind of uh, uh, what, what, you don't like to use the word documents what do you use you know Laughlin don't you what uh, yeah, yeah what, what I what I would say is Laughlin has spent 44 years helping business owners get their business started help them grow help them profit and protect their business and the document part is 95 plus percent of business owners don't do the formal corporate documents with uh, minutes, resolutions, right. all the stuff. And so when they get into a lawsuit or an audit, their business can't protect them because they haven't followed the base rules. And Laughlin provides those services for thousands of companies. Right. And I just so want to say, great Laughlin sponsor. Laughlin. Thank you, Laughlin. Yeah. Great sponsor. All right. Yeah. So, but yeah, but you said. The thing let me about just you finish my rant. Not, let me. Well, let, let's hear it. Yeah, because I. Let me hear my rant. This. I'm going to give it to you. You own your own business, and I. Uh, if you go to Coach Tunick, I blogged on it today. I guarantee I'll be on radio tomorrow and, and television for the next week on, on my blog at CoachTunick.com. But if you own your own business, Aaron Scott Young, there's there's no parachute. There's no net. We you 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 go 100 percent on your own talent, uh, your own wits. Uh, your own abilities, uh, maybe you have family support, the government doesn't care, your bank doesn't care, so why can't you as a business owner who's not taking money from the government, you're not a public business, you're not taking bu public funds, why can't you deny service to anybody? Well, first of all, uh, the idea is, I think if you're a consultant, you can say, oh, I just you know, I don't want to go, I don't want to work with that kind of a company or that, I don't really like that individual. I'm not going to, you know, I'm just not going to let them engage me. That's one thing. It's a whole different thing. If you're in retail in any way, if you have a store, if you have a restaurant, if you have, uh, you know, you, you, you have a bakery, you know, that the, the people in the wedding cake for the gay couple that's made the news months ago. The point is, if you're a retail store in, or a restaurant or something open to the public, the you know, you have to really, I, I, in my opinion, if you open the door and you say open, you're open to everybody. Now, you may say if somebody's too drunk, you don't want them in there disrupting, or if somebody is naked, you don't want them, you know, d breaking that law, being <laughs> in a public emporium. But if, if, if it's based on the color of their skin or the, the fact that they have a, a, a head covering on or that, you know, you, you don't want them to wear a cross around their neck because you don't believe in in uh, you're, you know you're a, an atheist or something you don't want to serve Christians uh, then that's baloney that if you're open you're open uh, capitalism is not a uh, a morality issue capitalism is about meeting the market serving the market and uh, doing it in, a, in an ethical way and I think I think if you're open for business and we have laws that that demand this uh, if you're open you're open and and if somebody if you if you don't like uh, if you're a white person who's got some beef against black people, well, too bad. You maybe you shouldn't be open to the public, you know. Because what what is it? This this whole thing. My wife and I talked about this a little bit, and I said, well, what about this whole the whole gay wedding cup or uh, wedding cake thing? The the bakery refused to make the cake for the. And she said, she said, you're not really selling cakes. You're deciding 
who who you want to work with based on your own morality. You're not really a bakery for the public. You're saying if you can meet my morality criteria, then I'll I'll deign to make you a cake. And uh, it's really interesting if if you're against uh, gays uh, having you know marriage rights, and you say well it's in the Bible. Then what about the young couple who are sharing an apartment, sleeping together, and they're engaged to get married? Uh, you know, but they're but they're fornicating, or what? You know, <laughs> what about the uh, the person who's been divorced before and it's the second wedding? The Bible says you're not supposed to get divorced. You know, I mean, at what point do you do you, um, get over being the morality police and be open for business and and serve the market? Well, first of all, all laws aren't just, and, and remember, uh, most laws are made by bureaucrats that are trying to appease and compromise and, and please everybody. So let me start sure, there. But we elected. We elected. Well, I understand, I, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm not. Ta- I don't want to get into a big political thing, but uh, and I'm not a, a Donald uh, Trump supporter. But you know, when he makes the comment that uh, politicians are, are stupid, I got to agree with him. I mean, look where our country is right now. Uh, we're a mess, and it's because we have no leadership. We have nobody stepping up and saying, "Look, I have a, a better idea. Follow me." Uh, so, but let me let me just go back to what you said. So, don't you think that if you own your own business and you brought up the retail store and somebody comes into your store, is that not like uh, uh, inviting somebody to come into your home? Nope, not at all. Really? Not at all. My home is not open for business, but if I'm in retail and I've got a shop and I'm on Main Street and I've got a sign open that says, "Come on in," you know, we we're a we're a whatever, we're a restaurant or we're a whatever we are, a pool supply company. Uh, if, if uh, you know... Well, do you remember the no shoes, no sir, uh, no shoes, well, but, no shirt, yeah, but no that's, service? But that has, that has nothing to do with your color of your skin. I'm not talking your, about the your, color of the skin. I'm not talking about what you're wearing. I wear hats. I mean, I'm sure I bug the crap out of people who say, Coach, I wish you'd you know take that Oregon Duck hat off and put on a USC hat. Uh but, but aren't you glad that aren't you glad that you don't get kicked out of a restaurant because you have your duck hat on? <laughs> I, you know, it's funny you say that. So we have a really fancy restaurant here in Southern California called Larson's, and uh, I walked in the way you see me being filmed right now. This is how I walked in with my dark glasses, my hat, my Oregon stuff. Everybody in the room turned around and looked at me. I said, "Yeah, you take a look at this Oregon duck." So you know, we all have built-in uh, prejudice. We all have built-in things that we like and we don't like and things that irritate us and and little picadillos. I get all that. I'm just saying that if you own your own business and and here's where I'm going down to a foundational thing. You take 100% of the risk. You get 100% of the rewards. I get that. But you also don't get any support or help from the government that's telling you that you can't do things. So why should the federal government I, I can understand why a local government might want to intervene for the best interest of a, of a community. I could probably argue half of that makes sense. But for the federal government or the state government, who has no role in your business, who actually is a hindrance most of the time in your business, because I think we're uh, in many ways overtaxed. Uh, small business owners are carrying the load of this country, and that's why I'm for a flat tax. We should talk about that. We should get uh, somebody on the air one day. I've no, you and I have never got into this conversation, have we? Well, no, but I, I'm going to. I'm going to make it. Listen, I'm a small government advocate. I'm. I'm. A, I'm not a fan of what I see going on in most states or federally. However, I would. I will disagree with you vehemently on one issue. Oh, go. The, go. We're here talking about starting a business, and you know the government is completely clear that they don't know how to make money. Right, they oh brother. So where 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 are we disagreeing? No, but here's what I'm saying: the government has put into place things like LLCs and like corporations and all kinds of tax credits and deductions that are for business to give incentives to the small business owner to take the risk. And corporations were designed 500 years ago to uh, to basically say, if I go out into business, I do have a safety net because if I run my company properly. And I'm not the personal guarantor and everything. I treat my corporation like a real corporation. And if I'm one of the four out of five that will fail, 
my corporation dies and I, the shareholder, don't go forward with all the burden, all the, all the creditors, all the problems from that failed business because the government has given us that protection. They say, we want you to keep trying so we're not going to burden you with the, all the ones that didn't work out. Likewise, W-2 employees get taxed and business owners take deductions. And there, if you own a business and you know how to use the tax system if, appropriately and you, you don't cheat, but you fully utilize all the deductions and all the credits, it's like getting a 30 or 40 percent pay raise over your next door neighbor who has a W-2 job. Well, first of so all... I, I, so they're not going to bail us out, but the government has... We, to say they haven't done anything to protect us is... I, I don't agree. No, no, no. Uh, but what they, uh, no, 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 what no, they no. have I, said I, is you can't be... You can't discriminate against people because... You no, don't like them. Uh, maybe maybe I didn't communicate properly or I misspoke. Uh, but I'm you sorry. know, you get me. All, I get fired up. No, I mistake. like that. I no, I like that you're fired up because oh, uh, and no. and maybe this will be a whole show that we'll do because you know things like OSHA. Uh, you know when you when you come down to say, look, you're 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 in this fancy ranch up in the middle of nowhere in Washington. No, but I know all about OSHA. I've have, I have lots of employees in buildings. Uh, okay, I, I know all about. So, that. and and I don't want to get into OSHA today. Uh, you're listening to the show called Start a Biz. My partner and I don't agree on everything. We don't. Aaron Scott Young and the coach. We're going to come back and we're going to finish this segment. And we've got great shows lined up for the next six or seven weeks. I mean, really great. Really the best of the best in this country. People that make a lot of money uh, helping other people in their particular type of business. Uh, uh, the, the, I think one of the best business books ever, Emeth. Uh, uh, Gerber is going to be like, fabulous, unbelievable. Going to be on with us, and uh, these are the kinds of people you don't have access to. We're going to give you access to these people. So we'll be right back on the show. We call Start a Biz. We're at our flagship station here in Southern California on KHTS twelve twenty a.m. Yeah, I don't run your business without listening to this show. I'm, 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 I'm not kidding you. You're going to learn something every week. It's like going to a master's uh, class here on our show called Start a Biz. I'm your host, Coach Ron Tunick, and my partner, Aaron Scott Young. We're going to just have about three or four minutes left, Aaron Scott Young. I just got never gotta, enough time. Just got to give a shout time. out to uh, never enough time to Adage IT. I'm telling you, uh, for some reason, I got a bug, just in my computer. I bought all these new computers, and there was an adage, God bless them. I mean, they're right here in Southern California. I know they're a sponsor. They are so good at what they do, Adage IT. If you got any issues with your computer, I'm not kidding you, call them Adage IT. All right, so uh, I believe differently than you. When you own your own business, I honestly believe you should be able to deny service to anybody for any reason. <coughs> That's how I believe because... Uh, maybe I'm old school. I don't know. And it has nothing to do with the color of your skin or, or what hat you're wearing or what school you support or what state you're from or what country you're from. It's just I believe but my own business is my business. And I should be able to make the rules. I should be able to uh, work with people uh, I want to work with. And that's how I feel. Yeah, well, and that's and you know what the great thing about being American is you have the right to feel that way and you have the right to, to uh, uh, you know disagree. That's one of the great things. But <clears throat> when it comes right down to it, uh, and uh, you you uh, texted me during the break and said, "Does my Michelle, wife Michelle listen?" Beautiful wife. And uh, you know what she texted me right about the same time. She said she said we all need to be focused on equal rights. We all need to be focused on, on giving other people rights because we, we care a lot about equal rights when somebody's trying to step on our own rights, right? Because all of a sudden, oh, people said, you know what, yeah. we don't want any, uh, you know... But ask age. Michelle, where's the right today of the business owner? I, 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 equal rights is... Inc Listen, when you, when you go into business, when you open your doors to the public to do business, then it, the, the rules today say you don't discriminate... And I tell you what, if you're if you're really you want clear, to discriminate you, against say, alcoholics, listen, people come in say, drunk. You don't want to you, serve listen, them. No, no. What are you talking about? If somebody comes into your store and they're drunk, you're not going to serve them. You're probably going to ask them to leave. No, I'm saying there are laws against serving booze to people who are, or no, if somebody's I'm, wandering through your store and disrupting 
by by causing problems because they're staggering around drunk, you could say go because there's pub there's laws against being disorderly in that way. What I'm saying is if it, when you when you don't have some sort of of a benchmark of this is what we are have decided as a society that says you don't discriminate based on on race, color, creed, and so on. Otherwise, what happens is is you've got you've got people who just whatever they get they get their their uh, pants in a wad and their undies in a wad. Oh, I and, get it. Now, and they we, go we, against, we, now, we, and now <laughs> the good news is that they'll in this day and age they're probably going to not get the business. Here's what I suggest: if there's somebody you don't want to do business with because you don't like the color of their skin, you don't like their their um, sexual proclivity, you don't like their uh, re- their religion or lack of religion, mm-hmm. uh, then then you know what? When you put a sign up that says, "Hey, by the way," You know, anybody can come in here, but I'm really, you know, I'm not a big fan of doing business with uh, Catholics, you know, or, uh, or, or you know, just do something. Did, you know, did says, you know I'm Catholic? Well, that's why I'm, I was going to say middle-aged <laughs> white guys, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we got to go. Jess is going to cut us off. You make sure that if you're the morality police, you lay it out in front. Come back you know, come back next week, Aaron Scott Young. The show is called Start a Biz. It's the show everybody's talking about. I know you love it because I get texts and emails. We'll see you next week at 1 o'clock and on the weekends. 1 o'clock, though, on Thursday. We'll see you next week.